Uh, my name is Levi Damien. Levi, yeah. you are the wonderful young actor in the show right now. And where are you from originally? Uh, originally from Oregon. Oregon. Yes. And what decided you to come to L.A. to get into the theater? Well, um, well, I about halfway through high school, I, I planned out my entire future, and this was part of that. As step. an actor. So As you knew actor. exactly what you wanted. Yeah. You came to the right place because you love the theater, mm -hmm. and this show is really theater. Uh, it's, it's by Jeffrey Hardgraves. Yes, yes. And it's actually, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, characters like uh, Tennessee Williams, uh, Quentin Crisp. Truman Capote, mm -hmm. and who's the other one? Oscar Wilde. Yes, and it's great. And you come in, tell me something. When you come in the entrance of the show, what, tell me about it. Well, um, my character is the one fictional character in the show. I come into this, I just had a, a subway accident, although uh, my character doesn't know that that's what happened. He comes into it thinking that he's just walking into to some some room, I guess, at the train station, and the first person he comes in contact with is Quentin Crisp. Um, all he, writers, you're all, they're all writers when the, these people are in the... Yes, yeah. yes, they all kind of file in one by one. Right, the right. first person I see is Quentin Crisp, he, who has been expecting me, which is why he's sitting here in the first place. He's just sitting here expecting me to come walking in. Uh -huh. and, and like I said, one by one, they shuffle in, and I at first think that this is just, well, first I think it's some kind of costume party. And then I think it's a dream because all these famous writers keep walking in and, uh, they, and they look so impeccably like they're supposed to look that they couldn't be just people in costume at some point. I, I realize this and then... Uh, well, you have Quentin, you have Tennessee, mm -hmm. and you have Oscar Wilde over yes. there. Is that right? Absolutely. Is that Oscar? And you have Truman Capote, witty as ever, and honest too, isn't it? Is, uh, Truman, you're really honest. I, I try to be, yeah, I try you're to be. You're not trying to be funny <laughs> either. You know, you're not trying to be funny in the show, you just are funny. I just am by nature, yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> Truman because, was, yeah. Well, yes, Truman was funny. And who are you? My name is Kevin Remington, and I play Truman Capote in Carved in Stone. Doing the character, how what do what have you learned about yourself first? About myself? Yes, by doing Truman. Um, that or uh, find about Truman. Truman. Um, what have I learned about myself? Hmm, that uh, that I have to be really loose doing this show. I have to be very open to anything. Uh huh. Ready for surprises. Oscar Wilde, uh, he loves to rub things in you. That you both fight and campy it up a little. We do a little bit. Why is that so? Um, because Oscar is like, uh, he's sometimes like a father, so I like to give him a hard time. Once again, you have all forgotten your manners. Again. This poor young man has just arrived. He has absolutely no idea where he is, and all you sorry cows can do is bitch at one another. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> the mouthy one. I'm staying out. Of course, the young man doesn't understand. Could we please just welcome our guest without the sign? Uh, my name is Jesse Merlin. I think Truman also really loved um, Oscar. So they have a special relationship. Part of why they pick at each other is because they really do like uh -huh. each other. Interesting. Where are you from originally? I'm from, uh, from Los Angeles, uh, but I grew up closer to San Francisco. But I just fell in love with this play. Leon Acord, who created the role of uh, Quentin Crisp uh -huh. in uh, San Francisco in 2002, was very successful, got great notices. It was a big hit. And we've just been trying. We've all, most of us, been involved for a number of years now just trying to get the show in, uh, cr uh, crafted. But, uh, you know, Quentin, um, you started this in San Francisco. Um, yeah. And tell me about the San Francisco audiences, because this is so typical oh Quentin gosh. Chris. They this, love Quentin. They there. loved him in San Francisco. I have to say, in L.A., I've had a lot of people say, well, you know, I'm not they, that familiar with Quentin yeah, Chris. It's why but, you um, think. Oh, gosh. Um, Go oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I think the obvious, San Francisco is San Francisco, and it's so steeped in gay history. And Quentin loved history. San Francisco. He spent a lot of yes, time Yes, he did, there. actually. I actually saw him once. We were sitting next to each other at a TV comedy taping in San uh -huh. Francisco. I didn't know anything about him then, so I was too shy to approach him. He lived in a very small room in One the room. village. Yep, East Village. And, and the uh, motorcycle gang used to protect yeah. him. Yes, the Hells Angels were. about him. He was absolutely a wonderful guy. And we all know your name, Mr. Talk, because you are one of us. You see, I, I'm still uncertain on that whole part of things. I mean, besides being a writer, <coughs> if I am dead, 
You're all famous. What do we have in common? Oh, you can drop the ad, sugar. You're a gay icon. See, look, time works differently here. Your name is now well established as a widely read, though short lived Spend time in Florida? No. Place? No. Oh, you should have. I, Tom, you never. I, I sure wish I had. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you from originally? Uh, originally from Chicago. Oh, that's a yes. great place, Chicago. Uh, yeah, I love it, but I also I love Los Angeles. I've been here 20 years. You were in a show uh, just recent, you just closed in Lovelace. Yes, that Lovelace, a rock Linda, opera. Linda Lovelace, that was a great show. It Thank was, you very much. It was Thank in you. LA, the theater there. How long was the show there? Uh, we ran for six months, and, and we're looking to move it or bring it back or do something else really? with it as well. Yeah. The, the Tom Williams, Tennessee Williams character. Yes. How did you get this part? I mean, it's so. Well, actually, uh, this is the, I'm probably the oldest member of the cast. My name's Kurt Bonham, by the way, playing Tennessee Kurt. Williams here in Carved in Stone. Uh -huh. Kurt Bonham. Thank you. And uh, I auditioned about three years ago when the show was originally going to be done at the Company of Angels. And unfortunately, they lost the space uh, before we were able to do the show. Uh -huh. And so um, Leon and Lawrence, our, our producers, have been wonderful enough to keep me along for this ride ever since then. Uh, we've been doing readings and, and I'm just so thrilled that we finally got to, to put the show up and have this phenomenal cast that we have. How many in the cast actually? There are uh, seven total. Yeah, seven total. That. It's wonderful. Judy Garland is just absolutely wonderful. I agree. Her real name is? Amanda Abel. Amanda Abel. Where are you from originally? In New York I presume. New York, New York. An Upper West Side girl. <laughs> West Side <laughs> West Side Girl, I love it. <laughs> you worked Manhattan in um, wonderful chic little rooms there. Yeah, right? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, the, the duplex, uh, Don't Tell Mama, uh, the 88s. Don't yeah. Tell Mama is a gay type of entertainment club. Why do you think gays love Judy Garland so? Tell well, I started it all. It wasn't really, <laughs> really? It wasn't really Judy. <laughs> okay. I'm like but, Kathy Griffin. I have my gays. Oh, uh, right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what yes, do you think? Uh, I think because she was not only a great talent, but um, a kind of tortured soul. And I think I at the, those, yeah, at the time that gays were just coming out, they all felt in a way that she experienced what they were experiencing uh -huh. by not being able to come out or, you know, that kind of thing. 